guys, it's Bastion time. I'm your host, Bastion. Let's get straight on to some Zelda news. Back during E3, we saw a trailer which showed the item screen for Wind Waker HD, and it looks pretty much identical to the original version of Wind Waker. Now, they're showing us a brand new redeveloped item screen that's uh, a lot fancier. Um, it's obviously customized specifically for the gamepad uh, for doing touch screens, so things are grouped together um, in interesting combos so that you can probably easily figure out where that particular item is that you want to quickly tap. I think it's a great idea. It looks really nice. I don't mind the change at all myself. After that Nintendo Direct from last week, we got some interesting information from E.G. Enuma about the item shop, or actually one specific item shop in A Link Between Worlds. He was talking about how uh, usually when we go and buy items in uh, A Link to the Past, for instance, you can buy bombs and arrows, consumable items. But now he shows off a screenshot that shows that you're able to purchase major items like the boomerang and the bow, and something that looks suspiciously like the whirlwind item from Spirit Tracks. So, and then he points out that the shopkeeper is a very suspicious looking character. I have a feeling that kind of like in Link's Awakening when you lose all of your items and you have to go and recollect them, uh, or was that also in another Zelda game too? I can't remember off the top of my head, but anyways, I feel like something like that's probably going to happen in this game, where after you collected all of your items, then you'll have to possibly purchase them back. That'll be interesting. We uh, haven't seen anything like that in recent Zelda games. Um, a lot of people have been speculating that maybe you can just simply, right from the get-go, buy these kinds of items at the beginning of the game. I really don't think they're going to change the Zelda formula that much. Did you know gaming posted another interesting tidbit about choo-choos, uh, specifically those from The Wind Waker, and the fact that that weird sound that they make uh, is actually a, several, two Japanese men talking sped up really fast. And uh, I can't remember exactly uh, verbatim what it is said translated into English, but it's something like just two ridiculous insults. It's a very unusual choice. I wonder if we'll ever learn the full story behind that, but it's pretty amusing to find out that a weird sound effect is actually two people talking. One of the things that that Nintendo Direct brought us regarding The Link Between Worlds is a brand new piece of official art, which is compositionally very similar to that first piece of art that they showed us, which really looks like a Link to the Past's Link painted in a Skyward Sword sort of style. This time around, we've got a Link that doesn't look anything like that. He looks more like the Oracle's Link, or actually even more devolved than the Oracle's Link, something like between Wind Waker and Oracle's. Um, I think that's kind of weird, but it kind of makes sense because this isn't the same Link as in A Link to the Past. This is several centuries later, a completely different Link in any ways, even though uh, the Link between Past Link and the Oracle's Link is the same Link, it did look a little different. Somehow he got younger in between those games, which makes no sense, but um, uh, anyways, it's kind of interesting to see that they've changed the way Link looks. A lot of people out there aren't a huge fan. Frankly, neither am I. I would have preferred the original uh, piece of official artwork they showed us, but, oh uh, well. There's a YouTube series out there where a Hollywood blacksmith, a guy who creates swords and weapons for various big-budget Hollywood movies, uh, on his free time, recreates um, weapons from video games, fan-requested things. Of course, it was bound to happen, the Master Sword. So in a very realistic style, with a lot of detail, he's recreated the Master Sword um, as it probably would have existed in real life. However, he paints the uh, hilt blue. Now, I know that for a lot of you, the blue hilt and Master Sword is the Master Sword, but for me, all the way back in A Link to the Past when the Master Sword first appeared, it was a normal, you know, silver color, and I feel like there's no reason why it would ever be painted blue. Uh, I wish he would have done the silver color instead of the weird, like, fake-looking blue color, but anyways, what's also kind of frustrating about the video is that he keeps calling it Zelda's sword. He clearly has never played a Zelda game in his life, doesn't know that the main character is Link, not the princess. But uh, anyways, it's fascinating watching somebody recreate an actual functional sword uh, that looks like the Master Sword. It's pretty cool. If you want to watch that video, there's a link for you down below. And that's it for this episode of Zelda News. See you guys tomorrow for some Nintendo news. Bye, guys.